Let's look at how to integrate Django and FastAPI applications with Snowflake in this video. Now, if you don't know about Snowflake, it's a data warehousing tool and it can be used to efficiently store and process huge amounts of data. Now, we did a video recently on DBT and data engineering that used Snowflake as a backend. In this video, I want to show how to integrate that data warehouse with a Django and with a FastAPI application. So we're going to start with Django and we're going to move on to FastAPI in the second part of the video. And there are timestamps below if you want to skip to a particular section. So it might be common for your web applications and APIs to integrate with a data warehouse. And that's the purpose of this video, to show how to achieve that when you're using Snowflake. Now, before we get started, if you want to support this content, check out the coffee page that we've got just below the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And let's dive in. Now, we've got a database in Snowflake. I'm going to use the same kind of database that we set up in the DBT video. So it's called Raw here. And we also have an analytics database from that video. And at the moment, we have a couple of different schemas within the raw table. One of them is the public schema, which is currently empty. So there's no tables within that schema. If we look at the Jaffo shop schema, we have got two tables in there. And we're going to show how to integrate Django with those later in the video. Now, there's a package called Django Snowflake. This is a database backend for Django. And it's going to allow you to configure Django's ORM to work with a Snowflake data warehouse. So here's some settings here. We're going to work these into our project. But first of all, of course, we do need to install Snowflake. Now notice here, we should use the version of Django Snowflake that corresponds to our version of Django. So for 5.1, we would want to install Django Snowflake 5.1 as well. Now I'm going to open up VS Code where I have a very simple Django project. And let me have a look at the virtual environment. So we can run pip freeze here and we're going to get back all of the packages and the versions. Now I've already installed these here, but you can see we've got Django version 5.1.7. And therefore, we're using Django Snowflake version 5.1. Now, in order to install Django Snowflake, you can copy this pip install command. And that will also work if you're using something like UV. Now, we have a single model in this Django application, as you can see in the models.py file. And this model is called product. So what we need to do to start with here is connect Django to our Snowflake database. So let's open up this documentation. And Django has a database setting. We're going to override that. And we're going to copy these settings here just now. And what I'm going to do is go back to the Django settings.py file. And if we scroll down here to the database setting, I'm going to override the default database. And that's going to be with the new settings that we have here. So the engine is going to be Django Snowflake. And that's coming from the package that we just installed. And what we're going to do now is fill in the other details here. So we need the name of the database that we're going to connect to. And the name of that database was raw. We also need the schema that we're going to use. And if you remember, that was called public here. And we can go back to the Snowflake UI here to see what we're looking at. So we've got the raw database and a public schema within that. And that schema is where we want to create the tables and the data for this Django application. Now we also need to get the name of the warehouse, as you can see here. So Snowflake is built around the concept of warehouses. And this warehouse is essentially a cluster of compute resources in Snowflake. Let's go back to the Snowflake UI. And if we go to the admin section here, we can look at the warehouses that are available. And the one I created in the DBT video is this one here called Transforming. So we're going to put that in here as the name of the warehouse. So let's enter that here. And we also need the user details. We can get that very easily by going to the account details here. And you can see the username here is Bugbytes. So let's copy that. And we're going to paste that into the user property. And the account at the bottom, we can also get that from this tab here. And the account identifier is at the top here. So let's copy that. And we're going to paste that into that bottom setting. Now the last one is the password for this user. Now I've set up a .n file here and I'm going to enter my password for that user. And we're going to load that into settings.py using the Django Environ module. So let's start by installing Django Environ. We're going to use pip install for that. And I'm going to enter my password into this .n file just now. Now once we've entered the password into the .n file, we can go to the top and we're going to import the Environ module. And I'm going to go to the documentation just so we can easily grab this code. So we also import OS. I'm going to copy that as well. We can put that at the top. Now what we need to do here is essentially read in the values from the .n file. So we need to create an env object. So we're instantiating that here. So let's copy this code and we can place this just below the imports. And we also want to read in the environment file using this env object. So we can do that here with this line of code. So again, we'll copy and paste that just below the base directory. So we are using the os.path.join method and we're joining the base directory with the .env file and we're going to read from that. What we can do once we've read that file is we can actually go down to the password here and instead of using that string, we can use the env object and the name of the environment variable was snowflake password. So we're going to read that in using Django Environ and actually you would probably want to read all of these in, but for simplicity, I'm just going to keep it the way it is just now. So let's now save this file 
and we can actually test out the Django to Snowflake database connection with these settings using the Django shell. So what I'm going to do is run python manage.py shell. That's going to open up the Django shell. And I think I've got an errant package here of Django extensions. So let's scroll up here and we'll just get rid of this. Once we've got rid of that, we can rerun the shell command here. Now there's a function in the database module of Django that we can use here. So let's import Django and I'm going to print the output of this function here. So it's in the .db.connection module. There's a function called ensure connection. We can run that and if that prints none to the terminal, that means that it's successfully connected to the database. If there's not been a successful connection, that's going to give you an error. But you can see we are now successfully connected. So let's exit out of the shell. And what we're going to do now is run the python manage.py make migrations command. And that's going to create a migration file for this model that we have here called product. And then we can run migrate and it's going to attempt to create that table along with the other Django tables in the underlying database. And remember that's a Snowflake database. And you can see that's now completed. And what I'm going to do is go back to the Snowflake UI and let's go back to the data page that we have here. And we're going to look at the tables that we have in the raw database in the public schema. Now beforehand we had no tables, but you can see now we are getting these tables here. And we have, among others, the product table here. And if we look at that, we can see the data preview. Currently we don't have any data in the table, of course. But if we look at the columns, they correspond to what we have on the Django model. So now Django can connect to Snowflake and it can create tables and do migrations. What we can also do is go back to the shell. So it's going to be manage.py shell. And I'm going to import the product model and let's try creating a product now. So I'm going to run this statement here, product.objects.create. And we're going to get a name of 3D printer here. Let's try this out. And we get that product back. And if we go back to Snowflake's database here for the product table, when we refresh this page, you can see we get back the product. It's got a name of 3D printer and we also have the created and updated timestamps. We can then query that database using the Django ORM. So what I'm going to do here is run product.objects.first. That should give us back the product object. And then we can update details. For example, we can set the name to 4D printer and then call the model.save method. And again, if we go back to the Snowflake UI and refresh this, you can see the name has now been updated. So we can now easily query data in Snowflake data warehouses using our Django application. And I would say that it's not really normal for a web application to write a lot of data to a data warehouse. More likely, you're going to read data to present it in some way. The data that's written to the warehouse is typically going to be coming from some kind of ETL or data engineering process. So if you have data that's large enough to require a data warehouse like Snowflake, you're probably not going to be writing to it from a web application. But it's useful to know that you can do that if you need to, but more likely you're going to be reading that data. Now, web applications would typically write the data to some kind of row-oriented database like PostgreSQL or MySQL. So that would be more typical. And if you have enough of that data, you can load it into a data warehouse and perform all kinds of analysis and transformation on that data. And perhaps Django or FastAPI would expose that data. And that's the purpose of this integration. Now, if you imagine that Django is going to be reading from an existing data warehouse, how can you integrate a Django app with that already existing data warehouse? So let's have a look at the Jaffle shop schema from the DBT tutorial. We have two tables there called customers and orders, and they belong in the same database called raw. So all we can do here in settings.py, if we go back down to the databases setting, we can update the schema here from public to Jaffle shop. After we've done that, we can exit out of the terminal and I'm going to run another management command here. So it's Python manage.py and it's going to be the inspect DB command. And we're going to output that into the core application. And let's create a file here called jafflemodels.py if I can try and spell this correctly. So let's execute this and see what happens now. So we've changed the schema to Jaffle shop and that schema contains two tables, customers and orders. And let's bring back the sidebar and let's go to our application. And we now have a file called jafflemodels.py and let's have a look at this file. It's auto generated and that's using the management command that we just used. And we can look for the class with the name of customers that corresponds to that customers table. And you can see we have that here. And as well as customers, we had an orders table. And you can see that here along with some of the fields that were added by DBT in that DBT video. So if you have a data warehouse and you want to integrate Django into that, you can very easily do that by taking advantage of the inspect DB management command. And if you want to know more about that management command, check out the previous video we've done on that topic. So with that, I'm now going to move on and we're going to look at how to integrate FastAPI with a Snowflake database. So we have this amazingly simple FastAPI application. We just instantiate an app object and we have a single route in this application. And that's a get request to slash customers that just returns an empty dictionary. 
And if we go to that on the browser, you can see that response here. Now what we want to do is connect to Snowflake in this Fast API application. So we're going to need to take advantage of a package for that. So I'm going to paste in a link to this and all of these links will be below the video. This is for the Snowflake connector for Python. So this connector provides an interface for developing Python apps that can connect to Snowflake and perform all standard operations. And by the way, the Django Snowflake package that we installed in the Django section of this video, that uses this package under the hood. Now we're going to work with this package directly, but there are some other packages you could use, for example, a SQL Alchemy package for Snowflake. I'll leave a link to one of those below the video, and if you're interested in videos on that, let me know as well. Now to install this package, we can go to the installation section here, and we can install that. So I'm going to copy this command, and let's go to VS Code. And if we stop the server here, we can run the pip install command for that. Now I've already installed it so we can clear the terminal and let's go back to the documentation again. I'm going to look at how we can connect to a Snowflake database using this connector. So let's scroll down and we're going to start with the import here. Let's bring that into our fast API application at the top. And then once we've done that, we can go back here and we're going to look at some of the code. So on the right hand side, we have this sidebar and we're going to connect using the default authenticator. So let's click that and we're going to copy this snippet of code and I'm going to paste that in just above the fast API app object. So let's paste that in here. And we need to replace these values with exactly the same values we used in the Django section of this project. So I'm going to do that now. So we've now replaced everything except the password. And just like the Django section, we're going to load the password in from this .n file that I have here. And that's got an environment variable called snowflake password that we're going to read in. Now we use Django Environ to read environment variables in the previous section. We can't use that here because we've got a fast API application. Perhaps we can, I don't actually know if that would work, but I'm going to use another package here called python.env. So let's copy the pip install command and we're going to paste that into the virtual environment and install that. Now once it's installed, let's go back to the top here and we can import .env. And then we can call a function underneath that. It's going to be the .env.load.env function. And all that's going to do is it's going to take the environment variables from this .env file and it's going to load them and we can then access them using the OS module in Python. So let's finally import OS at the top here. And then when we instantiate our connection to Snowflake, we can use the os.getenv variable. And we just pass the name of that variable and it's snowflake underscore password. So we now have our connection and we can use that connection within the route handler function. So what we can do here is wrap this in a try catch statement. So we're going to try and perform some code that's going to connect to the database. And then if we get any kind of exception here, we're going to catch that exception and we're going to return an HTTP exception from FastAPI. So at the top here, let's just quickly import HTTP exception and go back to our function. And here we're going to raise that exception. Now within the try block, we need to actually connect to the database and get a cursor and perform some queries. If we go back to the documentation for the Python connector and go to the using section, let's just go down to this section here on querying data. So we can see how we can query data here. We get the connection and then we instantiate a cursor object. So let's copy this line of code and we're going to bring it into the try block. Once we have a cursor, we can execute queries and this is standard Python interface for connecting and querying databases. So for example, we can call the dot execute command and select all from a given table. So I'm going to copy this and let's paste it just below the cursor line. And I'm going to change the query here. So we're going to get the ID, the first name and last name from the customers table in this Snowflake database. So if we go back here and go to the table for customers, we can look at the data preview. And notice the uppercase convention in Snowflake. We have ID, first name and last name. These are columns and we're going to query those columns and get back some results. So we call the cursor.execute method. And then in order to get the results, we can call the cursor.fetch all function. And that's going to return all results that have been found by this query. Now what I'm going to do is just print these results to the terminal and let's run fastapi dev again at the bottom to start the server. And we can go back to our application here. Now when we refresh this, Notice that we're getting this error here and it's telling us that customers does not exist or is not authorized. So let's go back to the connection details here. And I think I've used the wrong schema. So I used the public schema that we used in the Django project. We are actually connecting to a table that's within the Jaffle shop schema. So let's go back here and change that to Jaffle shop. If we save that and try this again, we can go back to our route here and we send a request here. We get back the same response, but let's go to the terminal here and notice that we're getting the results printed out. So what's going on here? Let's have a look at the query that we wrote. So we wanted these three columns and each result set is giving us a tuple with the values for each column. 
So that's the first record and you can see the second tuple here with those values that represents the second record in the table and so on. And let's say we wanted to return this data as part of an API response. What I'm going to do is actually create a Pydantic model. So if you know anything about FastAPI, you know that Pydantic is well integrated here. So from Pydantic at the top, what we're going to do is import the base model class. And I'm going to create a super simple model here just below representing the customer. So we've got fields for the ID, the first name and the surname. And these correspond to what's in these tuples here. And we're writing everything in the same file here. It's not a best practice, but we're just going to do that for the video. And then what we can do when we get the results, instead of printing to the terminal, let's create a variable here called customers. And this is going to be a list comprehension. So we're going to instantiate the customer Pydantic model. And we're going to pass in the data from each tuple for each R in the results. So let's have a look at this one more time. We've got these results here that we're fetching above. And for each customer, which we're calling R here in the results, we're getting each element from the tuple. So 0, 1 and 2. And we're instantiating the customer Pydantic model that's expecting those fields with those elements. And finally, we can return the customers to the client at the end of this function. Now, of course, we could also integrate with SQL Alchemy here. But let's just keep it like this for now and test it out. So let's go back to the browser and refresh this page. And now we see we get an API response and each record contains one of the customers that's stored in that Snowflake database table. So we've now been able to integrate fast API with Snowflake and we're querying for data in that database. Now I want to do one final thing in this video. So let's go back to VS Code. Now we've got this connection here, but we're not closing this connection anywhere. And if we go down to our route function here, we're using the connection here by getting a cursor object and executing queries. But if we have some kind of API over a data warehouse, the chances are we're going to need this connection in multiple routes. So we're going to declare what's called a dependency in FastAPI. So FastAPI is a very powerful dependency injection system. And we can see an example of this by clicking first steps here. Now a dependency is just a function in Python. So what we can do here is we can wrap the code that we're instantiating this connector with. So let's go back up here. We can wrap this in a function. So let's do that just now. So we'll create a function here. And we'll call this dependency get snowflake connection and let's tab over the content here. So we instantiate that connection object. And then what we can do after that is we can just yield the connection. And then once this is finished processing, we have a finally block here and we can call connection.close to do that cleanup. So we now have this function that can serve as a dependency in FastAPI and it's very easy to inject that into a route handlers. So in this handler, we're expecting a connection here. What we can do at the top is we can import the depends object from FastAPI. So we're importing depends and we can go back down here to the function and declare this dependency as a parameter. So our connection here that we're expecting, we're going to use the depends function and we just pass in the callable that we're using. In this case, it was get snowflake connection. Now this should still work if we save the file and go back to the terminal here. What I'm going to do is just restart this dev server. And if you go back to our API and refresh this, you should hopefully see that we still get the same data back. So the data representing the customers in that table is now returned. So the dependency that we've declared here will handle the cleanup of that connection as well. And any function that requires to connect to Snowflake can simply pass this in as an argument, this dependency, and it's going to get access to that connection. Now there's lots more we can do here, but we're going to wrap it up for this video. The idea here is just to show the basics of how to connect with Django and FastAPI, and you can build applications with those. And in this section, we've shown how to use Pydantic models, how to use the .env module in Python to load sensitive information, how to declare a dependency in FastAPI and then use that within our function. And we're doing all of that in the context of connecting to a Snowflake database. Now, if you have any suggestions here or improvements that could be made to this code, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more videos on connecting Python web apps to different data sources like this, also let me know in the comments. So thanks for watching. If you found this content useful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you've not already done so. And if you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page that we've got just below the video alongside all the resources from this video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.